Hello, it's midnight in Harare, Zimbabwe, 1 a.m. in Tanzania, and here in Accra, it's 10 p.m. And this is News at 10, live uh, from the News Hub at Addisawe, Kanda in Accra. I'm Stephen Enti. Let's take a look at what's making round on the local news front. Senior Minister Yao Safomafo says the Ghana Beyond Aid agenda has to fight against corruption as one of the key pillars. The Netherlands ambassador to Ghana had earlier challenged government to invest more into fighting corruption rather than its target of Ghana Beyond Aid. On the Trades Unions Congress, TUC is proposing to government to suspend the implementation of the second tier pension uh, to allow the retirees from next year recoup adequate investment. The TUC says government has delayed in releasing the funds to the trustees and fund managers for proper investment to be done, which will affect the lump sum of pensioners. But the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, NPRA, says its suspension cannot be done. On car partnership, Ghana Limited has resumed operations after a successful commissioning in Takradi in the western region. The partnership went off Thursday, August 17, to be relocated from Tema in the nation's capital. The relocation of the seven of the 470 megawatt plant was in line with government's strategic policy for natural gas from the western enclave to be utilized. All right, let's start with our very first story tonight. The Millennium Development Authority says it has not identified any information to suggest that either PDS, Carbank, Danwell and or personnel from MEDA committed uh, or conspired to commit fraud or other malfeasance in, uh, in, to the demand of guarantees on the suspended PDS deal. MEDA has also uh, denied earlier reports indicating that it uh, disagreed with the findings of the FTI consulting. There's more in the following reports. The investigation conducted by FTI Consulting on behalf of the Millennium Development Authority indicated, amongst other things, that the payment securities that were presented by Calbank and PDS to MIDA on February 27, 2019, which were subsequently accepted by the Ministry of Finance and ECG, are complained with recommendations contained in the initial contract. Also, FTI concluded that they have not seen any documents that would suggest that as of March 1, 2019, PDS, Calbank, Dunwell and personnel from MIDA should have questioned the validity of the payment securities. Given that ECG is the beneficiary of the payment security, they sought guidance from the Government of Ghana Financial Advisors on what the best protocol would be to confirm the authenticity of the demand guarantees. The report suggested that PDS could not secure the demand guarantees or letters of credit as per the requirements of the LAA and the BSA from a bank because of three main challenges, being PURC's delay in approving the rate setting guidelines and the initial rate that PDS was authorized to charge. The delay in agreeing on the list of PPAs made and PDS not having a certain level of capital required for the issuance of a cashback payment security. Uh, the Trades Unions Congress is proposing to government to suspend the implementation of the second tier pension to allow retirees from next year recoup adequate investment. The TUC says government has delayed in releasing the funds to the trustees and fund managers for proper investment to be done, which will affect the lump sum of pensioners. But the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, NPRA, says its suspension cannot be done. Government in 2018 released some 3.1 billion CDs to the various register schemes under the second tier. 
These schemes are expected to invest the amount, which will raise the needed lump sum for retirees from next year. After the 3.1 billion cities, some 22 billion cities have been accrued as of December 2018, the temporary pension fund account, which is yet to be transferred. Its delay has put fear in the trade union congress and its affiliates union that pensioners may be shortchanged. From next year, more than 1,000 contributors will retire and are expected to receive lump sum from tier 2. But the TUC is asking government to immediately suspend the implementation. If it is necessary for us even to push the date forward for our investment to yield better dividends, I think we must all come together and think about it. Because the time is too short for any of us here to expect any better thing after 20, in 2020. And no one single person can do that unless all the unions, like us meeting here, give the mandate to our leadership to ensure that we discuss this in context with the government. However, the National Pensions Regulatory Authority, NPRA, says it cannot be suspended. Tier 2 has no problem at all. Uh, and as I said, we are all expectant as to what will happen from 2020. But even then, it is not going to be some kind of a catastrophic kind of change. No. People will retire gradually. It's not like suddenly all people on tier 2 are now going to retire and so all the monies, you know, just get consumed. No, that's not what the situation is going to be. Already, the Health Services Workers Union is also arguing that net lump sum from next year will be encouraging than that of the second tier. Organized Labour wanted an increase of 41.9% on the state lump sum to completely erase the annuity factor deductions. But after negotiations, the party settled on a 31% from 1st June to 31st December 2019. This is the greatest achievement of the union for the year. But the NPR disagrees and it has even threatened to prosecute offenders who flout rules on a second tier payment. It is, it is, it's a matter of weeks away for us to begin to prosecute employers who are defaulting in payment to the Tier 2 scheme. Already, SNIT has been prosecuting people who default in the payment to the Tier, tier 1 scheme. Especially we are going to enforce private private the private sector scheme. And we are going to enforce that with, with the payments into the Tier 2 schemes as well. Meanwhile, the TUC is expecting SNIT to convene a meeting and discuss grievances with the contributions. And the executives of the Opposition National Democratic Congress Thursday held a crunch meeting after supporters of uh, the Swansea parliamentary aspirant Masawudu Mubarak went on a rampage protesting the dis his disqualification. The uh, protesters stormed the Ashanti Regional Party office in Kumasi and Block Roads as well as burning ties. Masawudu Mubarak, who intended contesting the incumbent uh, member of parliament for the constituency, Mohamed Muntaka Mubarak, petitioned the national leadership of the party over what he said were deliberate attempts to frustrate his candidature. Right, uh, let's uh, get on to the telephone lines and speak with Kwame Zhu, who is Ashanti Regional Secretary. Uh, good evening, sir. Thank you very much. So the party held a, uh, a crunch meeting today, uh, on Thursday, I beg your pardon, after the protest. Uh, can you give me what the outcome was? Uh, first of all, may I continue to apologize and reservedly to the rank and file of our party even beyond the Ashanti region for the content of footages that had emerged yesterday from our regional party offices. I think it is the hope and prayer of every party member across the length and breadth of this country that at this very juncture we shall be united and work hard to support the flag bearer to make his work easier for him. Regardless, uh, these things happen occasionally. It is a family, it's a huge family. Some of these could occasionally wear its ugly head. But leadership will take steps in the immediate term to guarantee uh, that there's unity, not only in Asawasi, but largely within the Shanti region. We also continue to appeal to anybody who is aggrieved about one thing or the other. Should use to use the appropriate party internal mechanisms to seek redress, the resort to violence and other means of protestation do not augur well for the image of the party and the internal cohesion of the party. So in the ensuing days we'll engage all relevant stakeholders.
all this and find a better way to establish some level of cordiality mm. with a view to, to close ranks as a party within the region. All right. I wanted an outcome of the crunch meeting which was held on Thursday in connection with this and uh, the disqualification of Mubarak, who uh, his supporters are protesting. Meetings are regular within the leadership of our party. And some of these things are internal. Or we can assure, particularly the listening public and members of our party, is that steps are being taken to assuage the intensity of the anger of those who disagreed with the decision of the party. However, we are all members of a particular political party that is governed by laws and regulations. Once the leadership of the party has spoken, let sober heads prevail, even as we continue to engage those who may be aggrieved by decisions of the party. Right. Uh, let us recognize that we have a bigger objective beyond our individual interests. That's right, uh, all I can see from now. Mr. Zou, we're grateful for your time. Thank you extremely. Uh, Kwame Zou is uh, Regional Secretary, Ashanti Regional Secretary of the NDC. I'm Stephen N.T. This is News at 10. We'll be right back. Please stay. Welcome back. Now, the Institute of Chartered Accountants Ghana has lauded the Bank of Ghana for folding up 23 finance houses in the country. The ICA Ghana says the decision by the Bank of Ghana will build confidence in the banking sector and make the sector more resilient. The chief executive officer of ICAG, Kwesi Ajimai, was interacting with a new team in Accra. He was elated that the BOG took firm decisions to collapse some finance houses with fake certification. He again said the cleanup will improve banking confidence and build a more robust economy. Rather, it should strengthen the confidence in the banking sector. Now, Bank of Ghana tells us they finished with the banking sector. What does it mean? It means that you should have assurance in the firms that are still staying. And so today, if I walk into the offices of any of these banks and savings and loan companies, I'm very comfortable that these are institutions that have stood test of time. And I feel very comfortable dealing with them. In a related development, the institute has interacted with senior high students to introduce them to chartered accountancy. The interaction focused on the need for the students to be abreast of public financial management systems before joining the accountancy profession. Discussions again centered on ethics and standards for accountancy profession. The CEO, Kwesi Ajimai, said their engagement with the students will yield the needed results. We needed to help them to actualize their dreams. We needed help to help them help them open up an avenue where they can really learn that, oh, indeed, this is what is involved in becoming an accountant, and then the routes that they have to go through to become an accountant. Some of the students shared their experiences. I had no idea about it because, so because of that, I had a different path. But when I was given that idea, I was briefed about it. I saw that when I should choose that path, it would be far better. And even with my career, even with a little experience about that, it will help me in my career. So I thought it would be a nice idea if I should, I should choose that path. Yes, because to be an accountant, you, you, do, you do not have to just be an accountant, you must be a chartered accountant. Okay. It's like being a doctor. So we have doctors, but we have doctors that are specialized, that's the surgeon. So being a chartered accountant, it's, it means that I'm specialized in it. So it's very good with the interaction with the ICAG. The Forestry Commission is planting uh, 32 hectares of rosewood trees in eight forest districts across the country. Rosewood seedlings for the tribe plantation were procured uh, from private nurseries in Tamale with proceeds from uh, fines imposed on seized rosewood containers uh, for the eight forest districts. Here's a report by Peter Kwao Adato. The rosewood tree consists of a type of tropical hardwood that has become a very expensive commodity. Rosewood trees are hedges and plants which grow in shelter belts and provide important overwinter refuge, nesting sites as well as pulling and nectar feeding sources for pollinators throughout the year. Some trees take between 20 and 30 years to reach full size for slow growers and 10 to 15 years for fast growers, far better than most timber species. However, until recently, the country did not see the need to go into its plantation. It is not a plantation. They always assume that when you get to the upper east, upper west, the north, you find a plantation all called rosewood 
lying there you know, for which people go and then and they harvest. It is not like that. But the recent invasion of the exotic timber species by both local and foreign nationals leading to its being labelled endangered tree species have shown the way. These species were not listed among the group of threatened species in the country because of restricted logging in the endemic ecological zones and the fact that traditionally it was mainly used for charcoal by the local people for income generation. The Forestry Commission has begun trial plantation across eight forest districts in the country. So far, 16 hectares have been earmarked in the northern and 8 hectares each in the Bonohafu and Ashanti regions, bringing the total to 32 hectares. However, total area developed exceeded the target of 1.8 hectares and the established stands are in good condition with varied survival and growth rates. And indeed, in Tamale, Bupe, Bole and Yendi, we had a target of 16 hectares. Out of that, we have developed 12.8 hectares. For in Kintampo and Sunyani, we had a target of 8 hectares. We have achieved 100% of that. In the Ashanti region, at Ofenso and in Karie, we also expected to have 8 hectares as a target. We have exceeded that by planting 13 hectares and they are all doing very well. So we are not only cutting but we are also doing trial plantations with the view of establishing rose plantations all over uh, uh, the country. Kojo Ousu Friye urged the public to support the commission to meet its target and spread across the country. And wife of Vice President Samira Baumia has called for broader stakeholder collaboration to bring an end to human trafficking in the country. Speaking at the National Justice Conference in Accra, Samira Baumia was confident punishing offenders remain uh, key to the fight. The quest to seek justice for the vulnerable has been the goal of several humanitarian organizations and some religious bodies. In Ghana, the International Justice Mission, IJM, has been at the forefront for the rescue of trafficked children enslaved on the Volta River. IJM, over the last two decades, has also defended the poor against violence and assisted survivors of sexual violence. Article 16, Clause 1 of the 1992 Constitution frowns on slavery in all forms. However, statistics available indicate that a total of 348 people were rescued, out of which 252 were children. 100 children were also rescued in 2017 and 36 in 2019. The National Justice Conference organized by the International Justice Mission brought together key stakeholders to deliberate on effective avenues to address the increasing injustices in the Ghanaian society. Head of the AME Zion Church, Bishop Heliat Dugbe, was of the firm belief retribution of perpetrators is key to the fight against what other speakers described as the kanka. In seeking justice for the victims, Perpetrators must face the law. They must be arrested. They must be named and shamed as a way of sending signal to others that their acts of injustice are dehumanizing and are not acceptable. And as long as they are not acceptable to God and to society, the church must not in any way do anything to shield anyone, but rather collaborate with the state agencies to help to identify such persons. He said Christians are culpable of most corruption cases in the country and must deem it necessary to amend their ways. Wife of the Vice President Samira Balmia said social injustice in the country can be overturned but would require key collaboration. Governments cannot ensure development without our society playing an active role in the process of ending all forms of trafficking. While governments must lead, the society has a critical role to, of partnership in our development agenda. The National Justice Conference was themed Social Justice, Key to National Development.
And while alive, former Zimbabwean President Robert Mugabe was admired by many for his hilarious quotes. But the thing is, some of the quotes were made up and did not come from Mugabe. Ozu Arai brings us a flashback of Mugabe's popular quotes. May I just ask you one question, sir? On what basis do you now regard yourself as President of Zimbabwe? On the same basis as Mr. Brown regards himself as Prime Minister of Zimbabwe. Precisely on that basis. Sir, you don't want your, sir, you don't want your security man here to beat me up in front of you, I'm sure. Yeah, but don't ask stupid questions. Okay, but yes, he's an iconic character and needs very little introduction. President Mugabe. Well, he's the president of Uganda. That is a lie. Really? I'm president of Zimbabwe. Take you England and let me keep my Zimbabwe. That's a famous quote from Mugabe. It's your money, keep it. It's our land, we will take it. Balance. His alleged quotes are receiving massive publicity. Thank you for the publicity you have given me. That's what's up. But there are some fake ones out there. Yes, I've come here to address that. Okay, let's set the record straight then. Okay. Did you say the only warning Africans take serious is low battery? Yes. Okay, confirmed. A woman with beauty without brains is her V that suffers. Is that your quote? <laughs> Did that come from you? Yes. Okay, confirmed. Even if sachet water best at circle, it causes flat. Hmm? Did you say that? Oh, no, 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 no. Did that come from you? All that is a lie. Really? President Gavi said no. Okay. Final quote. No matter how men shake their thing after urinating, the last job is always reserved for the boxers. Is that your quote as well? No. Definitely no. Are you denying that? What? Yes. Well, it's been awesome hanging out with you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for paying so much attention to President Mugabe. On a serious note, when is Mugabe retiring? I'll still be there until God says come. Indeed, God said, come, and he's gone. Uh, may his soul rest in peace, and uh, the people of Zimbabwe uh, are mourning a hero. And many people see him as something else also. Well, that's how we wrap up for News at 10. I'm Stephen Antti. Thank you very much for making time. On behalf of the crew, good night, and there is more news on 3news.com. Have a wonderful weekend.